Okay, this is Saturday, October 12th, and this is Song for Paul. It's Friday evening in the U.S. And Ivan has a topic for us to talk about today. Ivan, could you go ahead and uh, repeat the topic? Sure. Yeah, um, basically it's just um, the right effort, right? The Buddha talk about the four right effort. And the last one always sounds interesting, the four one. But I also was thinking about uh, like Kanata and herself, right? Because there's a lot of, uh, in many religions, right? Or other spiritual teaching, they always talk about you know, like in the in Christianity, they talk about the spirits living through you. It's like, and it's almost like there's something else and bigger than yourself that's like driving you if you can listen for yourself, you know, like that. So, yeah, no self. Like, I am no self in the right effort, basically. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, we can talk about that. Now, this is a splendid topic. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, the first thing to acknowledge when we're talking about the practice, talking about dukkha, dukkha naroda, talking about dissatisfaction and getting into satisfaction. What is it that Damarado and the Buddha always point to? It is that we can make a change. And that is where the playful qualities of the Dhamma arise when we see that, oh yeah, we can change things here. We don't necessarily have to get it right or make the perfect change, but it is worthwhile to practice changing. <coughs> there are those who uh, will take on a deterministic viewpoint, right? This viewpoint that we can't change things, that things are set in stone as they are, that things are predetermined and that they're, uh, the universe, the world, God, all of it is so much bigger than any of us that there's nothing that we can do to change the way that things are going to go and even the way we are is predetermined. This call was predetermined. <laughs> you mean this call was predetermined. You uh, deciding to make a change was predetermined, right? And uh, the Buddha would actually point to uh, the fact that we don't need to know whether things are predetermined or not. We don't need to know how things got started. We don't need to know how all of this works. It is just simply worthwhile to recognize that a change can be made. And the most worthwhile thing to do is to change from being in dukkha to instead being in satisfaction, to instead uh, getting rid of the dukkha, dukkha naroda. Because without dissatisfaction and with only satisfaction, there's nothing left to change after that. We've made the change, that is the change to make. You know, anything else that happens after we're satisfied doesn't matter. <laughs> now, uh, some people, they will take on the viewpoint of, oh, it doesn't matter before they've made the change. Oh, I'm dissatisfied. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and what the Buddha is saying is, well, there is one thing that is worthwhile to see as what matters, and that is, are you in dukkha? If you are, get out of it. Mm. Then things don't matter. Yeah, I feel like sometimes, like what Ivan was saying, like this, you know, the Christian viewpoint of like the uh, the spirit living through you. I feel like if you look at that from like a Dhamma perspective, you could say that sometimes, not always, sometimes. It can be a little different, but sometimes just like dropping everything and resting in awareness and letting that awareness come through you is the effort 
or the like anti effort of coming into satisfaction and out of dissatisfaction is like, I'm just going to rest. I'm just going to rest in awareness. And before I was busy trying to like think about all the things I was dissatisfied with. And then, but sometimes you just drop it. Sometimes it takes some muscling to get into satisfaction. And sometimes it's just resting in awareness and be like, oh God, this is great just the way it is. And all that work I was doing being dissatisfied. Uh, I don't have to deal with that anymore. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's a, a quote. There's a verse in the book of John. I'm not quite remembering how it goes, but it's something to the effect of, you know, those who are in the spirit are like the wind. You know, you don't know which direction they're going to go. You can't really see them. You can't hear them, uh, and they they don't move of their own accord. You know? They're just flowing, right? And the thing about the wind is the wind is generous; it blows everywhere. <laughs> yes. And. Uh, Lately, this past week, the mind has come back to a few times the elements, uh, you know, or how the elements are described in the Pali Canon. Um, you know, we have earth, wind, fire, uh, you know, what, what, what the... yeah, solid matter. No matter, I forget exactly how they say it, but uh, you know, you have what's hot, what's cool, what's wet, what's dry, this sort of thing. But I've been bringing that uh, to the practice here lately, and seeing that even these little sort of things in the body can be changed, uh, like the the speed at which the breath comes into the lungs, or the amount of which the breath comes into the lungs, changes how wet the throat feels. Right? Uh, and these little sort of things are tools that we can use to help get the body comfortable, right? And part of being satisfied is, uh, or part of developing the skill of being satisfied is also being able to settle down into the body and what it's currently experiencing and doing right now. Because when we're able to do that, then the elements and their effect on us become more clear to us. Right? And this is all just what are we talking about? We're just talking about taking it easy at the end of the day. Mm. There's not uh, there's not some higher power to please. There's not some uh, greater mission to accomplish. You've you've already won the grand prize that is being alive. Mm. You know, if you could have any superpower, what would it be? <laughs> That's it. You've already been granted that superpower, the power of being alive. I mean, it, any other superpower becomes irrelevant after that. The power to uh, know the body, the power to see the thoughts and change, the power to congratulate ourselves for engaging in this practice. The power to be friends with one another. What a splendid superpower to have. I was also thinking, uh, yeah, it, it is such a, a great uh, wholesome power because human uh, is the only species that have conscious awareness. I'm not sure that's a, like we are, like other animals are capable 
don't think like we do. But at the same time, right, like without the right practice, this power can become a curse because it starts going to a lot of unwholesome. Um, a sense of terrible. self. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell, but I don't know. My dog definitely has an experience, but is not tormented by the sense of self and, oh, what should I be doing right now? Oh, this person said this thing. I feel bad about myself or <laughs> animals don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah. And neither do we, because we can come out of it. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, one of the wholesome qualities of being around animals. Uh, and really, uh, you know, just any any and all nature that we can observe. And, uh, you know, that, I mean, this is what it means to see the Dhamma. It's just to see it in everyday life, to see it in dogs, to see it in the birds, to see it in the trees. And notice all of the not caring that's happening. <laughs> mm, yes. you know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, Don Marano and, and Sangha, what we talk about, you know, changing our thoughts and, and having wholesome thoughts instead. Well, another wholesome thought that you can have is, yeah, to just look at the tree. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, that's a wholesome thought experience that you're having uh, to just appreciate that and not have to produce something, not have to develop something. You know, when we talk about developing the practice, we're really, a lot of it is talking really about undeveloping, <laughs> deconstructing. Um. Yeah, the wonderful thing about the practice, one of the big shift I had, which is I think last year, is just understanding it's it's not about gaining anything, it's about unlearning a lot of things. And I um ironically, <laughs> the more you unlearn, you actually gain. So it's kind of paradoxical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this is uh true for the paradox of right effort as well, as you had mentioned earlier, Ivan. Uh, yes. As we continue to apply effort, we see that less effort is needed to be applied. Hmm. Yes. Ajahn Sumedho says, right effort is no effort. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm not sure that's true for him. But in a way, <laughs> it is... Uh, It is, it is something to look at. One, one word that I come back to, I've come back to it many times this year, in fact, is the word automatic. Hmm. And I, I'll hear people use this word. It's like, oh, well, eventually the practice becomes automatic. <laughs> oh, hi, Alex. Hey, Alexander, glad you're here. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Glad to be here. Talking about right effort and anatta today. But yeah, I just brought up the word automatic. So people will sometimes talk about how the practice becomes automatic. And I don't I don't have any problem uh, with this word, but I would uh, advise its use with a bit of caution because hmm, to say it's automatic almost sounds similar as saying, well, it's just magically happening on its own. <laughs> or it, some nihilism could creep in there. You know, right. yes, something yes. is just automatic. It could be, oh, well, yeah, like I don't, whatever is going to happen is going to happen. It's all automatic. <laughs> this is very nihilistic, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's why I do really appreciate the way Don Rado puts it. It's just enough effort to get the job done. Yeah. And yes. then when the job's done, then there really is no effort. Hmm. You know? And then the other thing that I would encourage is a shift in attitude. Mm. It's really what makes it no effort is the attitude that it's effortless. Mm. It, it's kind of like if, uh, you know, it's Christmas morning and the kids, they come down and underneath the, 
Christmas tree, there's a bunch of presents. And the parents say, okay, you can go ahead and open your presents now. How much effort does it take for the kids to open it? <laughs> no effort. Yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> so if we see life in this way, this moment in this way, if we see the breath in this way, how much effort does it take to enjoy this mm -hmm. breath? Mm -hmm. No effort. But we're just playing the word game here, right? Just using different ways of saying the same. And it's a fun um, game. Yeah. It, it is really a fun game, man. But I was thinking, like, the right attitude, right, to get there, you first, re it first requires effort, too, right? I'm not sure. But again, it's it's still um, even when changing our attitude, uh, it it's still it's it's requiring the effort to put things down, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Alex and I were talking about Tama uh, earlier this week, and I'd use the phrase "let your hair down." <laughs> You know, we've got our hair tied up in a knot and we're in worker mode. It's like, take your hat off, take your boots off, let your hair down, lay out on the couch, take it easy. <laughs> so in some ways, I'm not even sure if effort is the best word to use for that. <laughs> Yes, it is. It is true. It does take effort to start doing that instead of doing whatever you were doing. But this kind of again goes back to that. It's undoing the effort that we normally mm -hmm. put. That is the right effort. To mm -hmm. put. You gotta yes. you gotta crawl out of the pot of boiling water. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about uh, just as an example, rites and rituals, right? As someone who decides, oh, I want to put in no effort at all. I don't, I, I, or, or they decide, oh, I don't want to do anything. I just want to live my life in an automatic sort of way, right? Mm. Well, they, they choose, okay, I'm not going to say good morning anymore. <laughs> <laughs> People tell me good morning. I ignore them. I'm not going to, you know, participate in that. I'm going to practice no effort. I'm going to practice just. Being nothing, doing nothing. This is this is uh, incorrect practice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because again, what is it? No effort is just that attitude of like, oh yes, of course, easy enough to say good morning to everyone around me, you know, or, or the people that pass me by. Yes. Yes. And again, it's just it's playing with the elements. Mm. No, it, it, it sounds nice to hear good morning. Mm. It sounds nice when we say it, it sounds nice to hear someone else say it to us. So yeah, say good morning to people. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> you know, in the Discord group we were talking about, you know, becoming a robot. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess what I would say to that is like, yeah, sure, become a robot. Don't lose your heart, though. Mm. So getting uh, getting caught up in losing rituals. There's no need to let that also become a new ritual. Go, oh, I'm not going to do rituals anymore. <laughs> yeah, people get so, stuck in that. Yes, the grasping and the clinging there uh, comes from not the doing of it, but the attitude towards the doing of it. Um, 
our perception of it, our thinking of it, our feeling of it. That's where to examine, is there craving here? Is there wanting here? Is there wanting to go home when we're at the wedding? I guess along. Is there wanting to leave the funeral? It's like <clears throat> some people want to not be attached, and then they get attached to not being attached. And it just goes in circle. Yeah, um, I mean, I've sort of lost my attachment for the word attachment, honestly. <laughs> Hmm. Because it it's kind of a it can be a confusing term. Hmm. It's like your your hand is attached to your arm. <laughs> Getting rid of all attachments means chopping off your hand. Yes. <laughs> In a way, it's it's really not getting rid of attachments. You know, I mean, in a way, it's it's becoming more present, more open with what is the hand experiencing? Not ignoring it, right? That's what we're talking about today is don't need to ignore what's coming in. Yes. Hard the yes. sense stories doesn't mean ignore what's coming in the senses. It means take a look at what's coming in. Mm. And play with it. <laughs> I kind of want to like quickly ask because right after um, the fourth right effort, which the Buddha talks about, if I remember correctly, is you know if unwholesome thoughts still persist, then um despite all the above effort then clench down your teeth and make sure that whatever it, you know don't give in to that something like that um yeah i'm curious about that sure. um yeah yeah this is uh uh i would say considered uh more of an advanced practice and usually not necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this is really only for uh, when we've basically whenever we've done the four different methods of handling a student in the way that the Buddha would handle a student. First, soft method, then the hard method, then the hard with the soft. And then finally, we kill the student. So the clinching down of the teeth, that I would say is killing the student. I mean, you are, you know, uh, it's not necessarily a painful thing, but I mean, you're putting it quite a bit of force by doing something like that. And that's where, you know, if we're having particularly ill thoughts, Thoughts of ill will, such as like, I want to kill that person. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I've I've thought, oh, I want to kill that person just for cutting me off in traffic before. That isn't necessarily, even that isn't necessarily a good enough reason to clench one's te teeth. You know, first, and you know, this going back into right effort. First, we apply the line <coughs> in a soft way, in a gentle way. Yeah. Yes. And then, yeah, we can be a little bit more hard with ourselves, but even in being hard, we can be playful with the way that we're hard. Yes. You'll see Samarado be hard with students, but still have a smile while he's doing it. <laughs> mm. Yes. Throw that worry out, you know. <laughs> kind of a difference between being hard on the students and being uh, harsh. We're not encouraging necessarily the 
need to be harsh. And uh, when we talk about being soft and with the hard, what my mind tends to think about with that is don't be afraid to joke around with yourself. Mm. Oh, silly me thinking about that again. Mm. Yes. But again, you know, not being in a in a mean way. Mm. You know, I mean, all, all four of these, even killing the student can be done in a playful way. <laughs> You know, Damarano and I were talking about, well, what does it mean to kill the student? And uh, one of the ways to do that is to just ignore them. <laughs> because if they're not listening, no matter how, if you say it's soft or hard or soft and hard, then yeah, just ignore them at that point. You know? uh, you know, we were talking about the word ignore earlier. Don't ignore what's coming in. Yes. When you actually are choosing to ignore something, that's after you've gone through the process of not ignoring it, of taking care of it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, even in this regard, we don't have to make the rule of, oh, don't ignore things, right? That doesn't need to be its own rule. It's just, you know, if you're, you know, that's, to be saved for later, basically. Yeah. It's like, see if you can change it first. See if you can play with it first. See if you can, you know. Yeah. Just remember things. Hey, everything's all right. See, see how you can change the breath. See how you can change the body. See, you know, there's all of these different things that just can be played with in so many different ways. You know. Yeah. And so play with that. You know, and this, this, you know, not just goes with like thoughts of ill will greed of delusion this doesn't just go with that this also goes with what is the body experiencing if the body is experiencing some sort of pain don't ignore it do everything else first <laughs> okay and then if none of that works okay yeah just ignore it forget about it mm. again when we are talking about right effort each of these ways that we're playing with the body playing with the mind bring an effortless attitude to it yeah this is easy this is no big deal in fact mm. i'm gonna enjoy this yeah oh there's a bit of pain let me open that present right up <laughs> let's see what's inside mm. like Uh, this topic really humbles me in a very nice way because I, I realize how often I mean ever since talking to Damarato and you guys I have a fear of very effortless like because I was playing you know uh, mundane stuff or just engaging with the Dharma it's and no no worries start again like this this I'm not sure how to explain it but yeah and you know and then Sometime, right? And not sometime, a lot of times. <laughs> I just lost that perspective. And uh, not playful. I just realized, oh, this is such an old habit. Like, wow, like, this is such an old habit. Like, it's not playful. It's too serious. Yeah, and this is where uh, Anatta can be quite helpful. Hmm. Because again, the anatta is not uh, some sort of scary thing. Mm. <clears throat> uh, it's just another way to help us to take it easy. Like, oh yeah, that's not me. Because when we see it as me, that's when we take it real seriously. But when we see, mm. oh, it's just a movie with characters. And, Mm. Written by somebody else. <laughs> Sorry. Back. You know, 
Don Morado likes to use this phrase. I've also heard it from uh, Katie Byron. Uh, not my business. There's great mm. pleasure in that to be taken. Oh, that's not my business. It's not my business where it came from or how it got here. I mean, there's so many things that can come up in the mind that are not my business. Yeah, I mean, this wasn't your business before you're born, and it's not going to be your business after you're dead. So why does it have to be your business right now? You're just one little speck of time. <laughs> yep. So what is our business? Is there dissatisfaction in the mind? <laughs> just one thing to worry about, and you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> great joy in worrying about it yeah <laughs> worry about it worry about it the way a kid worries about what's going to be inside that present on christmas morning <laughs> a really fun video game in your own reality yeah i was going to say yeah. something a little yeah, bit go about, ahead, about effort could you bring your mouth uh, closer to the microphone? Um, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. I can hear you. But, uh, so there's a lot of weight, but yeah. yeah. Maybe speak a little louder if you could. Okay, yeah. Um, I was just going to say that on no effort, and no effort being the right kind of effort, um, if either through direct experience or through the words of someone who knows, you become fully confident that the natural state of the mind is nirvana, is peace and happiness, that that's just the mind in its natural state. Yes, there are thoughts, there are emotions, there are views and opinions, there are images, there are sensations, but these are all just the functions of the mind in, its, in, you know, in a state of activity, usually driven by craving. But if you, if you become fully confident that the natural state of the mind is peace and happiness, is nirvana, um, then the only effort that needs to be made is to relax into that natural state. And the, the analogy for that is, say you developed a habit of your entire life clenching your fists, um, and to the point where you thought that the natural state of your hands was a clenched fist, and then somebody said, no, actually, the natural state of the hand is to be open. Mm -hmm. and you took their word for it, um, it would seem at first that you need to make an effort to open your hands. Um, but really, the effort that needs to be made is to, to relax. And when your hands are fully relaxed, they rest open in their natural state. So, and then, you know, when the relaxation is full and complete, the mind rests in its natural state, the hands mm -hmm. rest open in their natural state, then there's no effort that needs to be made. But the effort that needs to be made in the beginning, even is sort of an illusory effort because you don't have to make an effort to bring the mind to its natural state. You have to simply stop, essentially, let go completely, completely give up, just let everything settle on its own into its natural state. But you have to have confidence and you have to be satisfied in order for that to happen because the fist will just keep reflunching out of habit. <clears throat> Yeah, that so was very well, Michael. Yeah, thank you, Michael. So, so yeah, enjoy the nature, be natural. Uh, Damarado said in a recent talk, you know, it's not about being normal. We're used to being normal. Normal is the... <laughs> The unwholesome way, be natural instead. Yeah, yeah. Normal is just a story, right? What is normal? Nobody can pinpoint it. They just make things up along the way. And this is how normal is. Normally, yeah. this, you'll go to heaven. Normally, if you do that, you'll go to hell. <laughs> Normally, if you say this, the girls will like you. Normally, if you dress this way, you'll get the job. 
Like it's also very, very normal to be dissatisfied. Right? Yeah. Society is like, yeah, it's normal. <laughs> yeah, and if people ex and sometimes I know how the political climate isn't here in the U.S., but people think if you're if you're not dissatisfied, then you're an asshole or something. You know? <laughs> if you're not angry, then you're with them, obviously, and you're a terrible person because you're happy. The terrible disease <laughs> in, the, in the U.S. How, with that how right now. How dare you enjoy this? Guys. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's insanity. Ivan as a visitor. Alexander, did you have anything you wanted to say? Yeah, one of the ways I hear it talked about sometimes, like with Damarato, you know, he'll talk about like pushing a swing. And I always appreciated that. First, you know, if you got the kid in the swing, maybe you have to give it a little shove. and But eventually you're just standing there and, you know, you can just give it a little poke and it'll keep on going. Or maybe the way that I've also heard it would be, you know, when the water buffalo is out walking around and you got your stick. It's just enough, just enough to keep them out of the farmer's fields, just enough to stop it from slinging duca all over other people, I guess, you know. <laughs> I really like those ways of talking about it. They let me know that it's okay to just have fun with it, to just watch, you know, to not have to be so serious about staying out of the fields because it's not that serious. We don't have yeah. to get it right. Yeah, exactly. Don't be serious. Enjoy it. <laughs> Mm. Why so serious? <laughs> Being serious is exhausting. It takes a lot of energy to be serious. Yeah, a lot of maintenance, a lot of upkeep. <laughs> All right, well, does anybody have anything else that they would like to say before we end this talk? Mm. Uh, just, uh, I just want to quickly, like, sometimes, sometimes the non-self can be very intellectual, right? So not think so much, just look at a tree. <laughs> like, just, um, uh, I'm, I'm just curious because sometimes I get into this, like, oh, why do I take this so personally or whatever, but, you know, I can't take the easy way out, just look at something, like, just not me, not my, I mean, if I if I tell myself not me, not mine, it, it never works, it, it, it never works, it's like I really have to distract myself in a wholesome way, like, just, um, distracting is it is it uh, a right effort to like like distracting oneself from the unwholesome that's going on? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, really, it's uh, I would say it's you know the the unwholesome is the distraction. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, makes sense. So when we're distracting the mind into the wholesome, what we're really doing. It's just saying, hey, the wholesome's right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you're being mindful. You're watching what's going on. So it's not like you're distracting in a way of ignorance. You're distracting in a way of atten like, yeah, attention, I guess. Or Exactly. Yeah. So it is right effort. Yeah. And one of the ways that I've heard it talked about in Buddhism is 
the Yoniso Manasikara, the appropriate attention, or wise attention, attending to how we're crafting our experience, watching how we're putting it together. And in that way, we can make that change too. And that's really wonderful, you know, because we have the sati that's necessary running in circles with the effort and we can do it that way. And as long as we're paying attention to what we're putting together, we don't have to try and slap a bunch of Legos together that are going to fall immediately, you know, or even yeah. just paying attention to a Nietzsche nature, you know, one of the things mm -hmm. that I've always heard growing up was, oh, you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. You know, and I think that's about the same for all things, you know, because it's always changing. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah when we say Got it's it. not yours, it's not yourself. Again, that's just, uh, that's relieving. Mm -hmm. The relief that we don't have to take ownership of. So in your practice, Ivan, uh, one thing that can be helpful is just to see, you know, am I owning this? Am I seeing it as mine? Yes. You know, and that can go for like actual solid objects, right? You know, you know, if we buy mm -hmm. some, one of our siblings wants a bite of the candy that we got. <laughs> If we see that it's not ours, that uh, that scenario plays out a lot more stress-free. Yeah. I see things in a bigger picture, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just bring it, bring it more into this experience, though, to this body, to this moment. Hmm. Yes, this moment. It's, uh, just living moment by moment. You know, we can talk about the universe, the God, you know, all of nature, yada, 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 this sort of thing. Uh, but really, when we're talking about any of that sort of thing, uh, that can be experienced right here in the senses and through the mind. Yes. Even in an empty room. There's activity. Yeah, enjoy yes. the uh, enjoy the activities right now. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the call here. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. This has been very pleasant. Enjoyable. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mikey. Yeah, if you're watching this on yeah, thank YouTube, you. yeah, thank you, Alexander. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and check the video description and you can get one of the Skype or Discord links to uh, join these calls and participate. Uh, the Buddha put the Sangha as one of the triple gems, which means it's worthwhile. And uh, I know here there's quite a lot of benefit gained from being in Sangha. I hope you all have gained some of it as well. So yeah, take care, everyone. Uh, have a good one. Have a good day. Take care, everybody. Take care. Cheers. <laughs>